asked is John Patterson, but accompanied by Peter Begg. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> we saved the best till last. Absolutely. <laughs> nice to see you, John. What? Happy to. Would you like one too, Aaron? <laughs> That'll cost you. <laughs> There's a beck for Bishop. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've sort of, for my own protection, I've brought my priest. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I've got to read it this time. Right. Uh, in 2001... The Minister of Senior Citizens was a young lady called <laughs> Leanne Del Zeal. <laughs> and she launched the New Zealand Positive Agent Strategy. So I know you've all read it. The year before that, she asked me if I would serve on the reference group that, would, that put this together. So there was a lot of work done into this. And from page one of the strategy, it's about participation. Older people carrying on working and participating in the community and using their skills and their expertise and experience and being recognised for the contribution. And these are the themes right way through the book. It says the positive agent strategy is expected to improve opportunities for older people to participate in the community and to ensure that the government policies support the same. Later, this was taken up by local authorities and Christchurch was one of them. You are signatories to this strategy. So that last line should read, to ensure that government policies, both central and local, support its aim. Now, 17 years on to now, I just picked a few out of these that's happening. 17 years on, older people wanting to downsize their homes and find their options are rather limited. I mean, the only places where you find smaller houses these days is in retirement villages. I've got no problem really with, with retirement villages. I know a lot of people are very happy living there. But what about the people who want to live in a community of all ages and carry on participating in the community? What about the people who cannot afford to go to retirement villages? I'm changing a little bit here as well. You know, we're building a new city centre, I've noticed. Um, it's great. Just walk through there this afternoon. It's looking terrific. But it's not being built for the older generation. See, planners plan for what they know, and no one knows what it's like to be an age older than themselves. So how can they plan for the future 80-year-olds when they don't have any 80-year-olds in that planning process? You need to talk to a few of us. When you're in your 80s, there's going to be far more people there than what there are now. So look at your welfare. When, I, when my wife and I got married, that was 1960. Hell, she's put up with me for, what, 58 years? Bloody hell. Back then, the average age for us men was 68. People retired at 65, and nearly 70% of those died within the first three years. 70%. Well, that doesn't happen now. Most people who are 65 have another 20 years or more to go. I've got three. <laughs> so this is, this is why the 80 plus is the fastest growing age group so we that's we, you, me, all of us we should be start really planning that now so I think we need to take another look at this strategy we should do what my computer keeps telling me, you know, update then press the restart button so the strategy is a national strategy and unfortunately it's been forgotten in fact, a lot of people doesn't even know it exists. So I think what we need is a local strategy. We need the Christchurch Positive Agent Strategy that's owned <coughs> by us, the people of Christchurch, and not run from the corridors of power up in Wellington. And when we've done that, we can update the communities in the city that's been hammered over these last few years. And we can all press the restart button on that one. So really what I'm saying here, well, it'll probably not make one blame but a difference to me, mm -hmm. but it'll make a hell of a lot of difference to a lot of you. Mm -hmm. 
So I rest my case. Thank you. 47 seconds to go. Did well, didn't I? Sarah. Thank you so much for that. Um, one of the things that occurs to me is we spend a lot of time at the moment deliberately trying to engage with the youth because this is the city that they'll be living in for the longest from now, if you like. Um, but what we haven't done very well is deliberately engage with um, those that are of retirement age and, and older. And some make the effort like you have to come and engage with us, but we don't deliberately engage the other way around. Um, we have a youth council, we have a, a, a youth strategy, we have a range of things where we deliberately engage on you know, long-term plan, those kind of things. Is that something that you would like to see happen at the other end of the scale as well? Uh, yeah, it would be good. But what I'm referring to here, it's that you get the feeling that people are saying, well, th th it's going to take a long time for the city to be built. Yeah. And I'll not be living then. No. But you're going to be my age then. Talk to me and I'll tell you what it's like being mine so we can plan it for you. Yeah. That's it. So but the positive age and strategy takes in that whole thing of being yeah. everybody together. You know, they're not a group there and a group there and... So, yeah, I mean, we, we could do a strategy and other things yeah. in the meantime yeah. and, and just start straight away and yeah. develop a strategy as well. Yes. Um, yeah, we don't have to, because sometimes the strategy takes a while to develop. But well, it's things developed, we, doing, we just need to adjust. Oh, a local one. Yeah. A local one, yeah. Yeah. There, are, uh, there are other councils that adopted um, a positive ageing strategy as part of the, the whole process. Yeah. Um, I know Hamilton did straight away, so... Um, hmm. Last word for me. Okay, I'll just uh, one very only, last word. Yes. only because you are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just, just this. I don't know whether this is still hanging around. Two thousand one, but you were part of all this, and yeah. John was. I mean, I was, the minister. I was the minister. You were the boss. Of it. Yeah. But this, this, this document. I was going to be the minister for youth affairs, but I, I got the know, wrong job. <laughs> this, this document is really worth reading now. I mean, it's still relevant now, and so I, I think, I admit that uh, following on from what John said, to really think through what positive ageing mm. strategy looks like is read the document. And I would really, really encourage us to embrace it. I'm a lot younger than he is, but I'm very much aware that uh, you guys were younger than I am. And it is talking about you and we're talking about our kids and grandkids. And we're building a new city. It's got to be for everybody, all generations. And it's not looking that way at the moment. All right. Well, look, what I'm going to do is, before I leave here, I'm sending a link to the positive ageing strategy to every councillor so that they can see it, and um, and we will follow up on that. Thank you very much for your submission. It's a good way to end the evening. Thank you. Oh, you're all invited on to a Smash Palace if you like. We've got another meeting going on at half past five. If you want to come and have a beer, I'll shout you one. Oh, right. Gosh, that, that could be very expensive. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we have an ageing together policy. Yes, I know. The ageing together policy, which John was on our working group. When was that? 2005 or six. I can send you the link. It's a policy framework. Okay. Oh, now um, I forgot to adjourn the meeting. So. Right, I'm adjourning this meeting until 11am um, on Thursday.